The growth, innovation, and progress at the University of Memphis is a direct result of Governor Haslam's courageous leadership. Governor Haslam currently serves as chair of the Wilson Center and serves on the National Board of Directors for Teach for America and Young Life. Please join me in welcoming Governor Bill Haslam. Thank you, Dr. Rudd. The very first time I ever spoke to a graduation, I had, was a newly elected mayor in Knoxville. And so I called the president of the university to say, what should I talk about at graduation? He got quiet a minute and said, what did the graduation speaker say at your graduation? And I said, I have no idea. He said, they won't remember either, just be really short. <laughs> so I promise you, parents and grads and friends, we will be short. Dr. Rudd, thank you for the warm words, but I want to say on behalf of all Tennesseans, you have done an extraordinary job leading this university, and we are all in your deep, happy gratitude. If I could just take a moment of personal privilege, if you're the first person in your family to graduate, and you're graduating today, if you're a first-generation college graduate, would you please stand up and let us recognize you? trajectory of this city and this region and this state by what you've done. Now, some of you have to admit, I won't ask for a show of hands this time, but when you heard that a politician was speaking today, you thought, just what we need. Dr. Rudd talked about the divisiveness that's gripped our nation, and you thought, you know, I'm frustrated and I'm exhausted by all of it. Kind of a pox on both of their houses, whether they're Republicans or Democrats or Independents. I'm over it, and I understand that. Did you know that uh, there's something called motivation, attribution, asymmetry? It's not how much you disagree with someone, but how much you disagree and you think they have bad motives. Today, the motivation, attribution, asymmetry in our country between Republicans and Democrats is greater than that between Israelis and Palestinians, to put it in some historical context. So the question is, what do we do about it, right? So who, who's going to fix this? incredible divisiveness, this sense of being at each other's throats. May I make a humble suggestion and say that we're the ones that are going to fix it. And we're going to fix that by doing something that's not very popular today. My political mentor was a man named Howard Baker. If you're older, you might remember he was a United States Senator from Tennessee. And Senator Baker had a saying, he said, always remember the other person might be right. Now, humility's kind of gone out of style today, right? We have politicians who say, only I can fix this. And we have NFL receivers that celebrate like they scored a Super Bowl touchdown when they catch a three-yard pass. And we have business leaders that are certain that the world revolves around them. Humility has gone out of style. Chrissy and I were traveling. All way. Chrissy is actually from Memphis. Her mother is a University of Memphis grad. And we were traveling for the state um, in China, and our flight was late. And I'll give you a little secret now that I'm not in office. When you're a governor, they kind of treat you special when you're, in the, when you're in the country. You get to get on the plane first. When it lands, you don't have to get off and go. And they just somebody meets you at the door of the plane, and down you go, and you're in a car in your way. But for some reason, when you travel internationally, they don't think being the governor of Tennessee is that big a deal. So uh, you don't get that kind of treatment. But we landed uh, in Hangzhou, China, and Chrissy looks out the window and says, what's all that about? I said, I don't know. So what are you talking about? And we looked out, and out there was a whole um, contingent of folks in full military dress, and there was a band. Uh, and I said, I don't know, but we're like, hurry. And so we, we look kind of like you do when you're 13 time zones away from home. We grab our stuff out of the overhead, and we're kind of walking, and we get the, uh, the exit ramp is one of those planes where you exit straight onto the tarmac instead of back into the concourse. So we get to the top of the stairs and we start walking down, and when we do, the band starts playing. And all the military officers come to full salute, and they stay that way till we get to the bottom. When we get to the bottom, there's a guy that has a bouquet of roses for Chrissy that is like literally this big. She later tells me it's more roses than she's gotten her entire marriage from me total, to, you know, combined. 
So we have this ceremony, and it's in Chinese, we don't understand it, and they do all this, and then these limousines pull up, and they push us into the limousine. And after this, like, 20-minute ceremony, all of a sudden, we haven't gone through customs, we don't have our bags, we don't have anything, and all of a sudden, we're just flying down the, inter down the highway about 150 miles per hour. And finally, uh, I turned to uh, the person who was with us, I said, excuse me, can, can you tell me what that was all about? He said, do you want an honest answer? He said, yes, he goes, well, we're having the G8 summit of the largest eight industrial nations in the world here next month. And we were practicing. <laughs> and so Chrissy looked at me and said, so I guess the story really wasn't about us, was it? I said, no, I don't think it was about us. I'm going to end with this. The happiest people I know are people who don't think the story is about them. They are not people who think that the world um, owes them happiness. They're not people that uh, spend their time complaining about what hasn't happened. They're people who see themselves as part of a bigger picture, who understand there's a bigger story going on, and they feel privileged to play a role in it. And they're grateful for the opportunities they've been given. I want to thank now uh, the folks in this audience who have enabled all of us who have had the opportunity to earn a degree. This is like a big relay race to me. Somebody behind you has run really hard. They've worked so that they could hand the baton to you so that you could now cross the finish line that you're getting ready to cross. But don't stop at the finish line. Keep going. There's plenty more people for you to hand the baton to out of gratitude for what has come before you. Thank you so much for allowing me to be, to be here. It's been a huge honor. The University of Memphis is such an important part of our state, and I'm thrilled to be a part of this ceremony. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bill.